What's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And today, Andrew and I are digging into another rapid fire QA session. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> if you want to watch this episode and all of our crazy antics, go to YouTube. Check out our Whistlekick YouTube channel over there. We got some other stuff over there as well. But of course, you can always listen to it. You can check it out at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We put it everywhere we can possibly think of. We, we spam the internet with this show. Why? Because we're trying to reach as many traditional martial artists as we can. That is our goal. It's what we do. We serve traditional martial artists as a traditional martial arts company here at Whistlekick. And if you want to see all the things going on behind the scenes, all the projects, the products, the services, the things that we do as an organization, go to whistlekick.com. One of the things you'll find is our store. And we've got stuff and you can buy it. And you can buy it at 15% off with the code podcast15. Saves you 15% helps us connect the dots on the back end that this show as a marketing effort does lead to some sales. Now, if you want to go deep on the show, show gets its own website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Two episodes each and every week with the goal of connecting, educating, and entertaining you, the traditional martial artist out there somewhere. Okay, we, we're, We've been downloaded in like every country, and I mean it, every country. I, I haven't checked those numbers in a while, but at some point we were downloaded as of a year ago in every country. And I think that's pretty darn cool. If you want to support us, if what we do means something to you, you've got a lot of ways you can help us out. Buy a book, leave a review, tell people about what's going on, follow the social media, maybe share a post or Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash whistlekick. We bring you exclusive content. You throw a couple bucks our way, we throw you exclusive content, whether that's behind the scenes, audio, video, book drafts, training program drafts, all kinds of good stuff there. You want to throw us a few bucks just one time? There's a tip jar at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Now, I did mention training programs. It's something that we've been putting a lot of time in and expanding. And the one that I've been talking about most recently is the speed development program. It's something that I wanted for myself. So I did a ton of research and dug in and applied all of that research to martial arts because no one else had done this before, at least in, in any way that I could find. So if you want to get faster, go to whistlekickprograms.com, find the speed development program. It is less expensive than you think it should be. And you can read more about it. And when you get it, you should do it. And then you'll get faster. And then you'll be a better martial artist. And then you'll send me an email and say, Jeremy, I feel like I should give you more money because of how much <laughs> faster I got with that training program. And, and say, we're okay with that. And that is totally fine. And if you feel that way, I'll say, you know what? That's cool. Just go buy another program. Get one of the, get the strength development program. Get the fight conditioning program. Get one of the programs that we're working on that isn't out yet. Because at some point it'll be the future and they will be out. Ha. All right. I'm I'm ready, Andrew. Can you tell? I'm in I'm in a good mood. Yeah. This smiling. is good. This is I'm really smiling. good. I'm feeling feisty. You've got some questions for me. I do. I've got four. I've got four questions today. Okay. that I'm going to just throw at you. No knowledge ahead of time. Yeah, you have no yeah. idea what I'm going to ask. Audience, we... Now, you don't know this as the audience, but when we say, I don't know what these are, it's true. I, I don't. There, It's not a lie. We don't practice. Okay, so when you say about this topic, I'm going to say <laughs> this thing. No, we don't do that. And in fact, if you know anything about me, you know that I don't prepare anything anymore. Yep. I'm good enough off the cuff that I don't like preparing. It feels feels silly when we when we do here here's a bit of behind the scenes not everyone knows this especially if you're newer i don't prepare for interviews i do not i don't research i don't look people up i don't read their book i don't do any of those things why andrew do you know why my guess is you want it to be fresh you want to be you want to learn stuff about them the same time that the audience does that's my guess it's it's exactly about the audience because this isn't about me Yep. It's about the guest or the subject, and it's about the audience. Yep. And, and I, I suspect I suspect the only time that's different is if it's a guest that you already know. Yes. You, know, you didn't do research per se, but no. you just know who they are. No, if, if a friend of mine comes on or something, yeah, I, I know who they are. But I do my best to put myself in the place of the audience because what is my role? It's to serve. My role is to serve the audience and facilitate the guest telling their story. So there, there's, a, there's a tidbit that we didn't even plan on. That's yeah. just for you. Enjoy that. Yep. <laughs> All right. And man, I, like, what do we do? I like you not knowing them ahead of time because that way I can ask fun questions like yeah. last month, which was how would you fight a zombie? You know, that's good. <laughs> With my letter opener. 
that's a knife. It's a much larger than than needs to be knife for opening letters. All right, so here we go. First question. So you got five okay. minutes. That's it. Which All doesn't right. seem like rapid fire, but if anybody knows Jeremy, five minutes <laughs> is a very short amount of time for him to talk. It really is. All right, so this first question was sent in by, uh, and again, like last month, I'm going to apologize if I mispronounce his name, uh, but Gianfranco Moreso. Moreso. I believe that's right. Moreso? Could be. It's a U. Moreso. Okay. Anyway, he gave me a lot of really good ones, so I'm nice. spacing them out. Oh, that's great. Um, so his question, or not question, yeah, question. There's a quote that you may have heard before that you don't choose your martial art. The martial art chooses you. Mm. Is this fortune cookie, fortune cookie woo, or is it deep wisdom? What are your thoughts on that? I think we can look at that in different ways. We can think of it in terms of you know fate or destiny. When I started training, I started training in the martial art that was nearby because I didn't know options. and Not that I even had options, but if I, if I knew what they were, if I had them available, I still would have ended up in that school. And think about how most of us end up in a martial arts school. Someone somewhere tells us about it. So how we start training and where we start training, the style, the, the instructor, tends to be a... a factor of other life choices that we make, who are our friends, our family, et cetera. So if you take a step back from that, if that's how it really happens, are we really choosing where we train? Or is it choosing us? If I start training in a particular style of karate and three years in find, you know what, this really isn't the school for me. And I go train at a taekwondo school on the other side of town was it only because I started in karate, that style of karate, that I became interested enough in martial arts to remain, but understand enough of what martial arts was to determine that this wasn't the best fit for me? Would I have ever ended up at that Taekwondo school first? Probably not, because I, that's what fate, destiny led me to. I think the other way you can look at this is a little bit more kind of fluffy. If we think about, does your martial art choose you? You and I, Andrew, could train at the same school, same system, same instructor, same classes, mm -hmm. and come away with very different understandings of that style and implement those movements in very different ways. So in that sense, the martial art is kind of choosing us in how it's going to express through our body, our, our decisions, our movement. And how we intake it. Yeah. Yeah. Done. All right. That was quick. This might be a really quick episode today, Jeremy. I don't know. I might have to come up on the fly with some others. Or maybe one of them will just, you know, take me 30 minutes. Uh, it might be, actually. Num number three, perhaps. But ah. we're going to move on to number two first, because okay. two comes before three when you're Usually. coming up. Um, this is a question from me. How important is it to learn traditional weapons? Now, I'm not, notice I said traditional. We, mm -hmm. I know your stance on being able to fight with this pencil and mm -hmm. with the stuff around you, but I'm talking traditional weapons of your style. So for me, it would be Okinawan Kobudo or mm -hmm. whatever. How important is it? Um, I think it is incredibly useful. I think... How important it is depends on your whys for training. And I, I know there are people out there who think this is a cop-out because I think it's very true. Why we train matters. If I'm training because it's fun and I don't think weapons are fun, I don't think it's important. If I'm training because I'm trying to develop an understanding of myself as a martial artist and you know i want to become a better person and i hate mar i hate training weapons i definitely should be training weapons because when we tackle the things that we suck at the most and find the most frustration with that's where the most personal growth lies if i'm looking to train because of applicability in a self-defense situation 100% I should be training with traditional weapons because, oh, but Jeremy, you know, you're never going to have a sigh on the street. No, but understanding different ranges of combat and how to implement different improvised weapons 
matters a heck of a lot. How you react to someone when you have a six foot staff versus a, um, what's, what's the wooden brass knuckles? Techie? Techie. Yep. Okay. Um, dramatically different. I've got to be in close with Techie. I've got to be far out with a bow. Do you, I, don't, I don't want you within three feet of me if I've got a bow. I'm going to lose. You're just going to grab it and punch me in the face, right? So understanding range and movement in all the diversity of ways that different weapons contribute to, I, I think, has a lot of applicability. Most people who have listened to this show for a while know my stance that diversity of training does have some benefits, even if you're going to primarily focus on one thing, being at least competent in a whole bunch of different things is beneficial. Good. Nice. Yeah, I would agree. I think it varies from person to person mm -hmm. on what you want to get out of it. Yeah. All right. Number three, uh, also sent in by uh, Gianfranco Moresu. And the question is, should martial arts icons be viewed more critically? More critically than they are, more critically than non-icons. Than non icons. Okay. I, and he didn't. He didn't specify that. I just. I, I suspect yeah. that's that's yeah. the direction it would go. Yeah. I think they already are. I think the point at which they become icons is because there is a collective knowledge and validation. Let's take a, a, a non-martial arts example because I think it'll be a little bit easier. Let's take uh, Tom Cruise as an actor. You may not like Tom Cruise as a person, what you've read about. I'm assuming very few people on this show have met him. You may not like his movies. But there is some collective validation because if he stars in a movie, it tends to do well. Now, some of that is selection bias. He chooses movies, and he's been around a while, so he gets some opportunities that not everyone does. But a significant portion, maybe not majority, but a significant portion of the movie-going population has determined that he is a good enough actor that they will part with their money to watch his films. That validation is pretty clear and easy to understand there. Now let's take a look at how it applies in martial arts. There are people out there, and I'm, I could name names. I'm not, I'm not going to name names. I'm going to intentionally avoid names. There are people out there who have enough attention from enough martial artists that what they say is paid attention to. It is heard. It's received. Mm-hmm. And through that process, there is critique. Now, while there are plenty of martial arts trolls out there who spend time on YouTube looking around at anybody posting content so they can, you know, hate on it, it's usually the people who rise to the point of some knowledge, some collective validation that receive the most criticism. And if they have elevated beyond a point where that criticism can be overcome, they will fall back down. There, there is an inherent check and balance in that system. You could say the same thing about training. How much time do I have? You have, let me see, you've got three minutes left. Oh, Wow. Sorry, two two minutes left. Sorry. Okay, thank you. If let here's a place where a lot of people see this. The transitional point between a kid's and an adult class. You get a kid who, let's say at 10, 11, 12 years old, is, you know, intermediate to advanced rank, maybe hit a growth spurt, and when it comes to free form movement, sparring, etc., absolutely dominates all the other kids in the class. And they're crushing it. And there has, there's some collective validation there in that all the other kids in the class look at that person and say, wow, that person's really good. Then they move to the adult class. They're in a whole different ocean now. And the collective validation is not there. 
because their skills in this new environment get tested and they are not, you know, at 12 years old, probably going to be the best person in this broader adult class where people have been training longer, are older, have better control of their bodies, et cetera. So as we move up, you know, let, let's imagine that everybody goes through this process. I don't care if you're, you're a first day white belt or, or not. Everybody is somewhere along this continuum. You just may not realize it or, or want it. As this show grows and more people pay attention to what we say, there is a constant um, push kind of up and down on this spectrum for myself, Andrew, for you, for the show collectively. And it finds its stasis. The longer something's been happening, the more it finds its stasis. You know, the, the pressure of, you know, water or geological forces, they're slow, but they're constant. They're continually moving. You could say the same thing about what's going on in, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I should have stopped talking a minute ago. So let, <laughs> well, me ra I, let me wrap it up wrap a little up. bit better. Should they receive more? What was the word? Uh, should they just be viewed more critically? Should they be viewed more critically? Yes. The more notoriety someone has, the more criticism we need to apply. Otherwise we risk elevating someone beyond their competency and um, ability to appropriately have influence over others. Nice. All right. Good. All right. Last. And I knew number, I knew that one was going to take the full amount. Last question. Uh, and this was from me and it was a topic I was discussing with another friend the other day. Um, how would you work with a student who just doesn't get it? You're teaching them in class and they just are not getting what you're trying to teach. And you take that however you want. Yep. There are only two circumstances where a student doesn't get it. They don't want to, or the instructor is not conveying the information in a way that they can understand it. Mm -hmm. Those are the only two possibilities. Yeah, well, Jeremy, but they, no, it boils. It. You give me any example, it's one of those two things. You can't teach someone who doesn't want to be there. It's not, it's, it's not going to work, right? So that's one obvious category. The other category, assuming the person wants to be there, if they, if yeah. they want to be there, if they want to get it, as instructors, our job is to find ways to get through to them. If I'm teaching you a particular kick and I'm demonstrating it at, let's say, you know, super fast, head level, and the person that I'm working with can't kick above the knee, and thus their ability to internalize, understand, process, and repeat that kick doesn't make sense because I'm showing it up here and they need to kick lower, that's on me. Well, you don't get it. You're not kicking high enough. Their body is not physically there yet. So let me demonstrate the kick. Let me show you how to kick at your level. Let, how does that kick look at the knee? I can, I can do any kick at the knee. I can show you jump spinning crescent that comes out at the knee if I need to, right? A lot of times when I see instructors say, oh, they're just not getting it. What they're actually saying is, I don't have any other ways of conveying this information. I'm feeling frustrated and my ego is not sufficient that I can accept that. I'm going to blame them. And that's a really disappointing place to be because I've, I've seen that happen. Now, that does not mean that an instructor does not have the right to get frustrated when you've exhausted your toolkit in trying to convey information. We all learn differently. I've had examples where I've stepped into other classes and, and taught people. And I've had the instructor say, you know, I've been trying to get that kid to kick like that for five years. And you come in and in 10 minutes, well, I taught it differently. I use different language. I use different drills, whatever it is. But that doesn't mean that I'm better. It means the way I'm conveying the information, the way that person receives the information is more in sync. And this is why it's important as instructors for us to train with other instructors so we can build out our toolkit of how we convey this information. The more resources we have, the more, if you've only got one way to teach a thing and that way doesn't work, 
what are you going to do? Are you going to belittle that student? Hopefully, you're going to go back to the drawing board. You're going to contact some of your martial arts friends and say, I got this kid. I'm, just, I'm, I'm not reaching them. It's an active process. When you convey information, you only have control over your part of it. If they're not hearing, if they're not understanding, if they're not doing, you can't change that. You can only change what you do. So change what you do. Yelling at students, uh, disciplining them for not understanding, these are things that do not work. So don't do them. Yeah, I would I would agree. Uh, one of the one of the first episodes we ever recorded together. Do you re happen to remember what it was? No. It was episode 483 and it was on becoming a better martial arts teacher. Mm. And one of the the things that I discussed was one of the best things I ever learned as an instructor was how to teach the same thing multiple ways. Yeah. And I think that's that's what in my opinion, many instructors don't figure out early on is that not everybody learns the same way. Right. And so if you have a student that is not picking up what you're, again, assuming that they want to be there, if they're not getting what you're trying to teach, you have to find a different way to teach it. The number one thing missing from most martial arts schools is a chalkboard or a whiteboard. Yeah. For that, for that reason. Yeah. Because it, it gives you another way to present information. If you, and, and I bet you've done this. If you have, you do hands. Uh, I have, yeah. Shod okay. Shodokan, yep. Okay. So if you, if you're teaching forms to people and they don't remember the pattern, they don't remember where they go on the floor, what does everyone do? Draws an eye. They draw the diagram. Yep. It's nice to have that diagram, something that you can actually put up instead of okay well imagine an eye and i draw it in the air and the person goes huh yeah right if, if, if you own your own space or or you know you've got 35 bucks burning a hole in your pocket get a whiteboard and put it on the on the wall yep very valuable um i've seen a number of instructors use it. not often but they use it infrequently and it's uh, you see the what oh okay now i get it yeah because some people need the visual Excellent. So those were our four questions that those we had good. for today. Those yeah, were those good were stuff. good. Okay. And what if people have questions or topics that they want us to tackle in the next one? They should send well, in the past. We've said they should, they could post them on Facebook, but I have changing. I don't think they should do that. Cause I don't want you to see them ahead of I time. I might see them. So instead, if you have a, a rapid fire question, if you want to stump, stump Jeremy on stump something. Me. Stump uh, me. I send, dare you. Yeah, you absolutely. Can't, you can't do it. People can't uh, or if you have something unstumpable. Oh, oh my gosh, that's a challenge right it there. Is. It is. I'm throwing down. I'm but you guys can contact you can all contact me at Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com and send send your questions. Or if you have maybe you have a topic idea, uh not not for rapid fire QA, yeah. just you have a topic you want us to discuss. Or or all, a guest suggestion. Always open for that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. All right, good stuff. Okay. Now if you like what we're doing here, if you like this episode, go check out whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Check out all the episodes. And don't forget, we've got transcripts, photos, videos, links, all kinds of stuff over there to help you get more out of the episodes. If you ever listen to a subject episode or a guest episode and you say, you know, this one really spoke to me. Those are the ones you really should be checking out because you're going to get more context. Checking out the, the guest social media or watching the video that we reference. When, when we talk about a video or something, we really try to make sure it gets embedded in the show notes page at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Now, if you want the rest of the stuff we do, best place to start is whistlekick.com, the store, code podcast15, all the other stuff that we've got working on, the projects, products, services, all those things. And don't forget whistlekickprograms.com. And the training protocols that we have over there, speed development program being the one I've been talking about the most. But if you want to support us in another way, if you if you love the content, Patreon. Patreon.com slash whistlekick. You throw a few bucks our way, we're going to give you exclusive content you will not find ever anywhere else. So that's what we've got today. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, listening, watching, whatever it was. So until next time, train hard, train hard smile, smile, and, and have, have a great, great day. day.